Amy from Inky and Scrappy back with the Fab Five Hop and Giveaway today. Double trouble with Lomp on old and new. It's our second birthday hop. So I brought in the Build a Snow Globe die set, the Book Collection die, and the Wickedly Perfect stamp set. I think for the most part those are the sets I end up using today. I pull in, I didn't end up pulling in any of stamps from the Wickedly Perfect add-on set. So today I'm going to be doing some watercolor with Distress Ink. So Forest Moss, Rusty Hinge, Dusty Concord, re because I don't have it in stamp pad form, and Black Soot. Just make sure if you are actually using the re to add enough water to it so it will dry, otherwise the resin will stay wet. I know this because we did that with red once. It was, it looked like my Yeti had a bloody mess by the time we were done touching our little red hearts. Anyways, so to color, I usually start with the darkest on the outside, then either adding in more water or just adding water to my, you know, palette or to my actual image to kind of soften it. So you kind of get the same, same as with alcohol marker coloring to get that nice rounded look on a round object. So, and then just working it back and forth until I am happy with it. I usually do most of my watercoloring on Bristol Smooth cardstock, but you can also use watercolor paper it works well as well. I'm bringing in some Loft, or Artist Loft, I think it's called from Michaels. It's actually an acrylic iridescent medium, but they, you can do Windsor uh, Windsor & Newton Iridescent Watercolor Medium will give you a similar look. The acrylic one just has a lot more sparkle to it. So that's why I grabbed that one for today. And there are all of my images colored up. So I'm just going to color the books really simply. I kind of left out a lot of the coloring and die building because it's um, a long card and we're supposed to be a little bit, you know, saving you some time. Anyways, let's talk about the hop. So, of course, all you have to do to enter is comment down below. Each stop at the hop that you comment on is a chance at the prize. The prize today, a $25 gift voucher from Lawn Fawn, generously donated by Lawn Fawn. So, all you have to do is comment here or on any of the stops, but all of them will give you five chances to win. So, by October 12th at 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and we will announce the winner on the Fab Five social media pages on the 14th. So if you got here from Steph's World of Papercraft, you are on the right track. Otherwise, go back and watch Steph's video. I will have all of the links down below. From here, you will go on to Jessica Squirrel, and from there, Jordy's Cards, and I'm finishing it up with Kate's Craft. I hope you get to visit all of them on the stops, because I know they did a fabulous job. As always, they're so inspiring. So instead of watercoloring my books, I just used my Uhuhu markers. Granted, this was not Uhuhu marker, you know, it wasn't marker paper. It was just random scraps of white that I had on in my white scrap bin. And so I'm not going to say that my blends were the greatest and I didn't work them overly too hard to get them because they were just supposed to be kind of filler for my card front and not so much the other. I did do a little bit of ink blending on or I should say bleeding out the color for my book pages. I wanted something that was lighter. I could have definitely done this on watercolor or Bristol Smooth cardstock and gotten that watercolor look. I kind of liked the mix of the two. You saw my markers there if you wanted to catch the colors. They really do go really well with those Distress Ink colors. So for my books, putting them together, I wanted a little bit of bulk to them. I also wanted, you know, stability and not having to put the little dots back in them and kind of do paper piecing with them. I was trying to keep it fairly simple and easy for that, that part. So just building them up and going from there. I didn't do anything too over the top on these. I do at the end end up adding in some more fun stuff. I did do a little bit of gold on the edge of the one. I don't, remember if I end up using that one 
that way or not. I think it ends up getting cut off. Anyways, anyways, so I have my books put together and I have my cats and or my wickedly perfect stamped images all colored and cut out. And now it's on to building that that snow globe. So I'd originally planned on making this one a shaker card, so I kind of cut out all my pieces in that, you know, planning on doing it that way. I changed my mind and, you know, ended up somewhere else. But this is really how I was going to build my shaker. So I did cut the frame here from some, I want to say it's called lava holographic paper. So it's like white, but it's kind of got this pinks and blues to it. It just really looked to me like, a glass globe would maybe look. So it was kind of fun to use that one for the outside of my shaker or my snow globe part. And then of course I brought in some wood grain cardstock and then just cut out the parts that I needed. I didn't need the full thing so I conserved paper and just cut out the pieces that I needed. Now I was planning on doing two layers in my snow globe because my images are a lot bigger than my snow globe, you know spaces. I probably could have done the same scene in the Magic Iris snow globe and made it a little bit bigger, but I got everything that I wanted to fit inside of this one. So I'm going to put my front piece of wood on, on there, I don't know, the base, the wooden base on there, and then I did cut out some gold accent pieces from some gold cardstock. And I will cut those, put those on the top as well. So just building all of those layers up, setting a acrylic block on top to kind of help hold it all in place while it dries. Now, building in my scene, I'm just using that cutout piece as kind of a guide for how my images are going to look on there. So I knew that I wanted the book, obviously, in, in front because the rest of the card has a lot of books on it. So my idea behind this one is that they were going to be books on a bookshelf with, you know, my bookshelves usually have knickknacks on them or things on them. So I kind of wanted to do the little snow globe on the bookshelf that was kind of tied into it. And at that point it was like, well, those are a lot taller than I wanted them to be for this one. So I was like, okay, I'm going to have to go and cut out a bigger piece and then of course add it back in you know behind so it has a little bit more floor room so I can pop up those images behind a little bit further further up in the globe so you can actually see them so I'm adding in that second cat there and then of course putting my little bubbling cauldron together and then I will pop that into my scene as well and then adding the spoon to the little kitty's hand. And then the other stuff, I probably could have cut the books apart and put one on one side, one on the other side. I thought about it at this point and I was like, you know, I'm just gonna go with it, right? And it was okay if it was hanging off of the edge or if it's gonna get covered up because, you know, it just makes that seem look like maybe it was three dimensional. And there's parts that you can't see because you can't see the back of the snow globe. I also did bring in that double-sided foam tape to kind of pop everything up and make the layer all into one. Added my extra little jar down onto the bottom of the base there. Now I need to finish or figure out my background. So I cut out the, the stitched rectangle frame from Lawn Fawn. And I cut out one and then I cut out a partial one. And I did this on white wood grain cardstock. So it kind of has that wood grain. I just wanted my bookshelf to be black. So doing it this way. So I'm going to kind of ink up my frame here as best I can and then ink up the shelf. So I'm using that partial as just kind of like my shelf piece. And then of course for my actual bookshelf backing, now, I wanted it to be black, but at this point, I had kind of decided um, it would be really fun to do some white. And so it went from being a shaker card, because obviously I realized I would have needed a little, a lot more bulk and height to get my shaker bits to even move in my shaker and not cover up all of my images. 
So I was like, hmm, it'd be kind of fun to make it look like it glows. So I brought in that dusty Concord Distress Oxide with that black soot and kind of made it look like this is where my snow globe is. And I kind of wanted to bring, uh, kind of give it like an eerie glow behind. Well, not really eerie, but that purple glow from the cauldron. Kind of gives it a magical look and or feel. And then, of course, I brought in Windsor & Newton Iridescent Watercolor Medium mixed with some of that black soot ink. And then I splattered everything, you know, because it's coming kind of, you know, I wanted it to have that magical look and feel. And so, therefore, everything needed to have some iridescent shimmer and shine. And this is the point where I was like, yeah, I think it needs some lights. And that's how it ended up becoming a light-up card. Now, I was planning on building this one for you, but it's going to take way too much time. So I will, if you are interested in building your own lighting mechanisms, I will have a video up this coming week, hopefully. I'll do it in real time. I will list it and link it down below as soon as it goes up so you can check it out. Otherwise, if you follow me, you know, you'll, it'll pop up on your subscription list anyways. So I decided this one was going to be mm, too thick for a card. Sometimes I like to take an A2 card and turn it into a decor piece. And so that's what I ended up doing. I drive my children and my husband nuts and I save scraps of wood from when we build stuff. And they're like, mom, you have a whole bucket out in the shop. Yep, I do. And so this was probably a two by a two by six and I cut it down to four and a quarter by five and a half for my base on this one and then I just used whatever drill bit was in the drill press so I think it's a miter saw that I used to cut it down and then I use the drill bit in this I think it was probably a quarter inch or three eighths drill bit which ended up working really well for this one Time-wise, so this is I am showing you the components that I use. So I buy the little LED lights. I can list all of this stuff down below if you are interested. I know I've done a light up video with that exact one. I don't know if it was that exact one, but at least one or two. The one that has three lights, I I think I need two batteries, and that's why I have the two battery pack thing. I've done the two with one battery pack and it works well. I've done three with one battery pack. I don't think they get as light. It's probably because I don't use, you know, like the little diodes or whatever they are that you would use to like up your amps. I don't know. I, you know, I'm, I'm a very simple girl. I can understand the whole open circuit, closed circuit. So I will try to do one that has a little bit more info on the the lighting mechanisms, but go ahead and get the ones from Pear Blossom Press. They have some amazing ones, especially the twinkling ones are fun. I, I've bought their twinkling ones and they're really cool. It's something that I probably won't ever learn how to do myself. I can solder, but you know, it's just a lot more work and time where this one is a fairly simple one. It's just a matter of putting two wires together. You know, I can handle that. So I punched some holes in my base here, kind of figured out where everything was going to go. And then once I'm happy with kind of my placement here, I'm going to glue, I'm just using glitter art glue on to my chunk of wood. And then I will glue down my card front and make it into a decor piece. I think we as paper crafters forget that card fronts can definitely become decor pieces. I wish you could find four and a quarter by five and a half picture frames. <sighs> I would frame so many cards. I do do a lot of five by sevens that way. Like I'll purposely make a card five by seven so I can throw it in a five by seven picture frame. It is what it is. Anyways, so I did splatter my block. I don't know if I would have needed to splatter my block, but I did it anyways. I wanted to continue that sparkle and shine all the way around because I don't know if this one is going to be on. It'll probably end up on a end table that you can see the front and the back to. And I will show you how I finish it at the very end. 
So I'm bringing in some black double-sided foam tape. This is super thick, like probably that three, that three millimeters. So it's a great shaker style one. I picked this one up on Amazon. It's fairly cheap and reasonable. They have it in white too. The white does not have this annoying red stuff on it, like the release goobers oh my gosh it was like it's like red is it red um score tape is it the score tape that i don't know i know there's one score tape that has the red on it like the red line stuff it's the same annoying like red line stuff like it wants to stick to you the static like ugh, it's just yeah that was probably my only gripe about this one i did cut out a lot of um me putting stuff together. So I peeled all of those off, added a little bit of liquid adhesive. This gives me wiggle room to kind of lift and scrunch and move stuff around, making sure that everything is good. I did put backing onto, I like to save my double-sided adhesive thicker backing for projects like this so then I can throw it on the back of a roll and then I can cut it with my paper cutter. Just works a lot faster at cutting things thinner with double-sided stick adhesive. So I'm just kind of playing with the placement on my lights here and where I want them, how I want them to kind of shine through. And then I'm going to place them down. Now, I used score style tape to kind of hold them in place. You're not going to see it. And, you know, it wasn't a great big deal. I'm still kind of futz in with the lights, making sure that they line up exactly where I want them before I put them in place. So this way I can just hold them down with that. I could have used washi or the other stuff. I just wanted to make sure that they were going to stay in place well. And I know double-sided score tape holds very well. So now at this point, it's just a matter of me. Oh, I did remove it on this one. Okay. When I did the back, I didn't remove it on the back. So I'm going to add glue onto, I also did add a quarter, no, an eighth inch double thickness foam tape onto the back of my globe so it it's popped up and has the same thickness as the base so i started gluing stuff down or in or placing it down so i glued my first one down and i was like um i wanted to put book themes on the spines so i did bring in a tim holt the tim holtz tiny text halloween because it has this double toil and trouble stamp and so I just picked out the double and trouble on there to go with our theme today you know I could not and then of course using the other book names from or the book yeah I think it's the book names from that wickedly perfect stamp set I kind of played with maybe bringing in some from the other new book stamp set but these ultimately worked well for me. I did end up bringing in some foam tape for my books to add some more depth and dimension to them. I wanted them to have different levels of thickness and layering. I also brought in some glitter gel pens to kind of add some more accents onto my book bindings. I could have definitely cut one apart and done it that way. I just liked that the gel pen made it quick and easy. I did cut apart the one here to add on the little green strips. You could definitely color them that way if you wanted to. I just wanted to be, it was a lot quicker for me to color them all one color and then come back in and kind of pick and choose what I wanted later on. A lot of it had to do with where the colors were layout wise because I didn't know what books were gonna go where. And so this way I could do it that way and kind of make it shall I say pleasing to the eye color wise. So I needed to cut my book a little bit here just because I wanted it to fit in. It was a little bit longer. I ended up using the smaller of the two that were this style for this one. I brought in that extra piece I had cut out and this way I could kind of use it as my stencil or my cutting guide on this one to kind of help me move things in and out where I needed them to be. And then I was lucky enough that my glue hadn't totally dried or adhered down and I could still kind of tuck things behind my snow globe. So 
I had to work really quickly <laughs> to make sure that I could get it all done beforehand. So I'm just kind of working on figuring out what's going to work where, how I want it to all look, and going this way and that way with things. I wanted heights to be a certain way, make the, you know, kind of give me some varying colors and heights. I think I'm done at this point. I really felt like I needed something yet, but I'm going to work on the back part. So hiding that, that box. So I took a piece of black cardstock, ran it through the, with the Tim Holtz 3D wood grain embossing folder. So it kind of matches my background here. And then I'm going to build a box. So I ended up double thickness on my foam tape. So it ends up being six millimeters thick. So it's super thick in the back, but it's a decor piece. So I'm not too worried about it. And that's probably one of the biggest things with light up cards. They tend to get really thick. And so, especially if you're using one of those types of things. So this is where I say I brought in that score tape again, just to kind of hold my wires in place. Now I wanted to be able to pull my battery box back out if I need to replace the battery. This way I don't have to worry about that battery going dead and not being able to use it again. This way I can pull it out. Plus it also makes it a little bit easier for turning it on and off. I can just pull it up a little bit, flip it on, and then it'll work. So I thought, okay, I'm done. But it was still missing some stuff. So I ended up bringing in that. I found the tassel, of course. So I added that one in for my bookmark. And then, of course, I pulled out these little teeny tiny purple diamond, I don't know, self-sticky self gems from, I think they're from Joann's. I got them eons ago. But they're the perfect size to cover up those little dots in the dies, even though I may have spent some time, you know, making some of them look pretty. I decided that, you know, yep, uh, I liked the gem look better. And then, of course, brought in some glossy accents for that file that's sitting there. And then, of course, I was like, mm, it just needed something there. And so I looked through my Halloween already colored images. And this one, I want to say, is probably from one of my Fab Five hop cards from, I don't think it was last year, it was the year before. So it was probably from our first that five hop that I had an extra image of. I just brought in that purple or that orange marker and kind of colored over the red so it just looks like a darker orange. And then I brought in the glossy accents for that and added that to it. So it goes with my color scheme on this one well enough. That's why I save all those extra images. And then of course I flipped it over and used all of the rest of my images here. So I added in the little kitty and some little paw prints. And then of course the books made kind of the back of a bookshelf with all of those extra images. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Go visit Jessica Squirrel next and keep getting inky. I hope you guys have a fabulous day and good luck. Bye.